Welcome to another episode of Out There Living. On this episode of Out There Living, we're going to do a cheap, quick and easy modification to the High Cat Sandfire Canopy. This modification is a must have for all dog owners so you can take them anywhere with you when you get out there living. G'day, welcome to Out There Living. Today we've got a short video on the High Cut Sandfire Canopy. We're gonna be putting a little window, a little hatch in here for the dog. He's coming into summer and we love to take him swimming. And he's sort of missing out at the moment because we can't lock him in the canopy without any airflow. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna utilize this space here across the back because we've kept the canopy pretty open. And we're going to just pop a little hatch in there for him to poke his snout out. And come over here. Have a look here. This is the hatch. It's about 80 bucks off eBay. It's got two locks on it. Well, not locks. They're, they're just latches. But that'll allow for good compression and dust seal. Comes with two sets of hinges. One's a clip-on. The other one's a lift-off. We're going to go with the lift-off. Because really once it's open we don't want it on there so we'll head over to the sand file and we'll have a bit of a look at where it's going if you see here we're going to put it in roughly here and in a moment i'll show you why we'll open the door up you have a look in here because of the system they use it's got a double skin and a lot of stiffening bars and a stiffening plate for the locks so we're going to go above the fold and some of the um, hatch might sit behind this bar, that doesn't matter. And then most of this space here will be where the opening is. So he's not going to be able to jump out or anything like that. It's going to be a nice small opening and it's going to just let that light adjust. It's going to line up with the big boot across the back here. and. We might have to put some sort of matting in just to keep his hair under control. So what you want to do is you want to measure in to your back partition wall and then your control arm and then you want to mark the outside of your fridge partition and we'll go centre of the opening. Just going to give us 350 there. So let's go back to that mark. And we'll do a center line up and down and then what you're going to do you're going to measure your flange which is 430 get your half measurement 215 430 We'll do the same down here. Two fifteen, four thirty. Oh, then we want to work our heights out. Open up the door. We'll work out our heights. I'm going to measure from the fold to this plate, and it is three hundred and six mil. So we've measured our widths. We've measured our top plate. We can't go any higher than that. We'll have a look at our flange. We'll sit it on back to front. You see your protrusions there. You actually have a look where they sit up here. And it leaves a little bit of framework. I might go all the way up. Gives me something to screw to up there. And if, if you come down there, it doesn't look as good when it sits on the fold. 
So we'll go ahead and mark that all out. We've marked the outside. Just gonna hold the plate over it. What I'll do, I'll mark it in black with a black Sharpie. Just using a bit of aluminium angle here. So to get these rounded edges, just gonna get a hole saw. You look at that, a 75 is pretty close. It's gonna come up okay. So to mark your holes for your hole saw, roughly get your radius, which here to me is gonna be 37, it's gonna be close enough. So, we'll come up 37, and in 37 on each corner. So I've marked the corners with a hole saw. Just go to the small drill bit as a locator. Because it's such a big hole saw, I'm gonna use a little bit of cutting fluid, not much, just to be doubly sure that my uh, saw stays in good nick and the metal doesn't heat up too much. Now we've got the holes drilled, move you in here. As you can see, the bar behind there, that edge up there, it's lined up perfect. The holes are a little bit rough. We'll tidy them up later with a file. And we're just gonna cut between the holes on this line. We're a little bit outside it. It's not really gonna matter, we're gonna have coverage. So I'm gonna do that with the grinder. You can do it with the jigsaw or anything else that you got that might have the appropriate blade on it. Bearing in mind, you want to remember what's behind there. Now we're all prepped, ready to cut. Don't forget, cover your paintwork and glasswork. Hot metal's going to eat into both of them. Use your PPE, earplugs, glasses, gloves, whatever you've got. Always start with your most difficult to get to cuts first. I'm going to do top, bottom, left, and I'll finish on the right. This makes it easier. Make sure the fits in and it looks like it's going to be fine. I just need to tidy it up a little bit. Now I'm lucky enough to have one of these to get into the corners. It's called pencil grinder or burr grinder, whatever you want to call it. But you can just use a round file, whatever you've got. This is just a little bit quicker. So we've gone ahead, put a grinding disc on. Now attack these straight edges. Now the holes all cut, um, tidied it up as best I need to. It's all going to get covered up inside and out, so I'm not too concerned. Could have done a much needed job, put a lot more time into it. Got to get some rubbing alcohol and rub all these oils off. All the uh, pencil texture marks and pen marks, get all the cutting oil off. Anything that's going to stop our Sikaflex sticking. Now I'm going to mount with the lift off hinges. Today I'll just put some tech screws in because I don't have very good bolts. I'll have to get some bolts and I'll show you the end result there. But we'll SIG flex it on, tech screw it back and then swap the bolts out another day. 
Now I'm just using Sikaflex. Uh, you want to use a flexible product. And you're better off putting it around this edge here. That way it doesn't ooze out the edge of your surround and create all this mess. And that way you're pushing onto it. You're not carrying the sticker flex around. Be generous with it. You only want to do it once. So chuck plenty on there. Get overlap. A little bit more in the corner here. Now you want to just aim this up, sink it in, push it back, have a look at your gaps, see what you think, you can measure it if you like, measure it to a square edge, so now today I'm just going to secure it with some self-tapping metal tech screws button heads. And once the sticker flex dries, I'll swap them out for bolts. If you don't want to over tighten it, you'll crack the plastic and work your way from bottom to top. What you can also do is come on the inside, make sure that sticker flex is pushed through. See there, it's pushed all the way through. So we're gonna get a good seal anyway. I've just wiped it. It's gonna get carpeted over, so that'll hide. And just smear it around with your finger. And if you put some bolts through or techies, just silicon them too. And there we have it. A nice, neat hatch for the dog with the lift top hinges installed. Thanks for watching this episode of Out There Living. If you've enjoyed it, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can keep up to date with all our latest videos. Head over and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and share Out There Living with your friends. And just remember, whatever it takes, get out there living.